Good morning or good afternoon. Y para todos los español hablantes, buenos días o buenas tardes. Damas y caballeros, ladies and gentlemen. Some of us are in different time zones, even though we are all in the Americas. My name is Trevor Jones. I am the president of UPF Peru, and it is my honor and privilege to be the moderator of this closing session of the first virtual international leadership conference. No, okay. Firstly, I want to thank you all for joining us again today. This has been a tremendous achievement on all levels, including the fact that this happened in the three mega regions of the world, the Asia Pacifica, realm, the Americas, and Africa, Europe, and Middle East combined. And Dr. Walsh has spoken in all of them. Indeed, Mr. Tom McDevitt has done the same. I hope that you all realize that we are creating history by holding this event. We have reflected on our past by celebrating the 15th anniversary of the founding of the Universal Peace Federation. And in the same moment, we are creating a new future. I want to thank and congratulate you all for attending these three days of meetings within, within which we have heard from so many outstanding speakers who have moved and inspired us. The associations that were launched at the World Summit 2020 just a few short months ago have been given life and purpose through this ILC. I do not think that any of us others would have dreamed back in 2005 how far and fast the UPF would grow. I remember well Dr. Reverend Sun Young Moon's visit to my mission country of Peru when he was establishing the UPF through a global 100 city tour. We packed the Sheraton Hotel in Lima to overflowing with many guests unable to enter the main conference room or even the hotel itself. Then Dr. Moon spoke to us for more than three hours. Such was his enthusiasm and determination to share his vision and make the Universal Peace Federation a successful vehicle for change. But I am not here to talk about myself. We are gathered here in this virtual room to listen to the reflections of our moderators and our leadership. We have a packed program. So without further delay, and with just a short reminder that each moderator only has a two minute slot, I want to welcome our first speaker. Mr. Franco Ferrungi from Canada, please take the floor. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon. Buenas tardes. Bon tardes. And bonjour. Uh, my report is on the International Summit Council for Peace session held on the historic day of 9-11, which provided perspectives from current and former heads of state and parliamentarians from Ecuador, Haiti, Canada, and the United States, along with regional UPF leadership from the Americas. The session lasted for 90 minutes and had 700 plus attendees via Zoom and many more who watched on other platforms such as YouTube. Discussion focused on the impact of coronavirus with a sub-theme being the presence of China in Latin America and the Caribbean. For example, Dr. Charles Yang emphasized that the US and Latin America must strive for co-prosperity as most immigration to the US is from the Americas and aid from China versus aid from the United States is out of balance. UPF founders emphasized that the United States was blessed not for itself, but for the purpose of serving the world. His ex Her Excellency, Rosalia Arteaga, former president of Ecuador, said the current crisis underscores significance and need for us to work together throughout all spheres of light, and that education is paramount to overcoming corruption. UPF is creating a wave of hope by bringing us together. His Excellency Joselarm Privar of Haiti said that the coronavirus is one of the most destabilizing challenges and even the most developed economies are not sheltered from the devastation of COVID because COVID knows no boundaries. UPF is creating, um, we are actually in a race to build a world of peace. The Honorable David Kilgore of Canada shared 
that COVID-19 countries is wreaking havoc and the only bright spot is improved hygiene. This crisis also spotlights those who care and it appears that nations such as Barbados, New Zealand, Germany, and Taiwan, all led by women with leadership that is empathetic and assertive are emerging as the least damaged because they place health before the economy. The Honorable June John Doolittle of the United States expressed appreciation for the founders of UPF and stated there is no other organization like this that seeks to eliminate the causes of global conflict over such an enormously wide spectrum. Shared values that bring us together, our religious freedom, faith in God, and the most essential value for strong nations is respect for the family. He concluded by saying that all of us here have the same name. We are the Americas. Finally, Dr. Michael Jenkins, international president of UPF, stated that beginning our program with interfaith prayer is needed to emphasize our unity with God. Aid and cooperation from North America is critical, and with more interaction, we can help and increase cooperation with the rest of the world. Thank you, and let there be peace. Thank you, Dr. Famulario. Excellent. And now I'd like to invite Dr. Simao Ferraboli going down to South America to Brazil. Our Secretary General will now speak. Dr. Ferraboli, please. Hello, everyone. Uh, our section, it was about IAPP, International Association of Parliamentarians for Peace, and we had on the table, Honorable Dan Borton from USA, Honorable Silvia del Rosario Giacopo from Argentina, Honorable Samuel Garcia Sepulveda from Mexico, Honorable Loretta Sanchez from USA, Honorable Carla Zambelli from Brazil, and Honorable Jose Alberto Alfaro from Costa Rica. I don't want to make exactly a reflection about this section because I cannot summarize one hour and two minutes, but I want to say something about this time of UPF. When I think about UPF today, I have to go back to 2005 when it was founded. In Brazil, the event took place on December 12th and we got more than 3,000 people. At that time, we didn't have a clear idea of what the UPF was or would be. Today, after 15 years, I believe that we have all discovered the UPF's DNA. And this DNA is deeply connected with true parents who want to return this world to God. So my word is just gratitude to heaven for so many blessings and for the earth, for so many wonderful people that I met and with whom I was able to work together. Thank you for all that I have been able to learn from all of you, especially from the leaders, Dr. Walsh, Dr. Young, Reverend Shin, all ambassadors for peace, all of you who are great leaders. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Faraboli. I'm sure we all feel the same way as you have spoken about today. And now I'd like to invite Mrs. Tomiko Duggan, the Senior Vice President of UPF USA. Mrs. Duggan, please. It was my pleasure and honor working with uh, behind the scenes with the distinguished faith leaders who were the presenters at IAPD session. I want to thank Ambassador, uh, not Ambassador, Archbishop Stallings, the founder of the Imani Temple African American Catholic Congregation and National 
chair for the IAPD USA for his genuine enthusiasm in moderating the session. Our first speaker, Dr. Taj Hamad, Vice President of UPF International and International Coordinator of IAPD, spoke of the vision and the history of IAPD, which was founded by Dr. Hak Ji Han Moon on November 12, 2017 in Korea. Since that time, over 23,000 religious leaders have participated in the work of IAPD in 93 nations. Bishop Noel Jones, senior pastor of the 17,000 member congregation of the City of Refuge in California, illuminated how God has given men documents that guide good leaders into good action. He shared his gratitude for Mother Moon's effort to bring all the leaders of value together and let them talk to each other. He said, if we truly respond to the call that peace start with me, we can defeat every ruler of darkness and bring out the best in others. From Ecuador, Archbishop Christos Tomos Selly, the Metropolitan of the Orthodox Church for the Mexico to Argentina, spoke with urgent concern in responding to the effort to displace the reliance and even reference to God from the base of our culture and the government. He stressed that an interreligious council at the United Nations, such as proposed by Reverend Moon, is of paramount importance of world policies. policies. Imam Talib Sharif of the Nations Mosque in Washington, D.C. said, we need to recognize the beauty in the diversity that came from Adam. The coronavirus that is driving us to work together is instru uh, instructing us, you will never reach the garden of paradise unless you have faith. And you will never have faith until you practice loving one another. Pastor Alejandra uh, Stamatias from Argentina brought an always needed women's perspective into our session. She expressed how her work to help women overcome abuse and the violence to transforming their lives and the environment is guided by the love of God. Father Ignatius Dominique Sabio Setot, Roman Catholic from priest from St. Lucia, spoke with passion about the value of the family from his experience as clinical psychologist as well as a priest. Faith alone is not enough to raise a family. Children imitate their parents in learning about life and love. It is in the family of origin that we learn to be peacemakers. Every day when we wake up, we need to think, how can I be a peacemaker today? Our last speaker, Imam Kamlal Kansan of the Islamic Circle of North America from Canada noted that pandemic is creating opportunities for realizing peace, generating always to express and attract dignity, love, and to generate a sense of understanding among humans to say every life matters. In closing, in this session, addressing the importance and challenge of religious leaders, leadership, each of the faith leaders shared their insight derived from their years of devotion to God, prayer life, and service to others. The session was a testimony to the additional power and influence of interfaith leaders who have ability to cross so many barriers on the road to peace. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Duggan. Thank you.
That was a very inspiring session that you were responsible for. And now I'd like to invite Mrs. Angelica Selle, the Vice President of Women's Federation for World Peace International, and indeed President of the Women's Federation of America. You have the floor, Mrs. Selle. Good morning. Buenos dias. Thank you very much for a most extraordinary ALC conference. Uh, we were most inspired to launch the International Association of the First Ladies for Peace here in the Americas in the Caribbean. I would say it was a very powerful start because we had an amazing distinguished panel of women leaders. Former First Ladies and also leaders in government came together in unprecedented unity and love and harmony to address the issues from a woman's perspective. And we also had the privilege to have Dr. Sanjin Moon, the, found, the founder's daughter, uh, our senior vice president international, to address the audience from a point of view of the founders, encouraging women to take the historic moment, to catch the historic moment and bring their voices and gifts to, to the table. Each panelist outlined the painful, sometimes horrendous effort, effort effects of the pandemic, such as domestic violence, and shared potential solutions, providing new vision and encouragement at the same time. We had the wonderful Madam Hilda Patricia Moroccan de Morales, First Lady of Guatemala. She artistically depicted an analogy between COVID-19 crisis and the phrase, the calm after the storm. If we are able to reflect, she said, on the fragility and therefore importance of human life, learn to find strength in community, to form collective solutions, and educate our children as citizens rooted in universal values, we will be better equipped to face inevitable changes and challenges for years to come. The Honorable Madam Maria Fernande, Fernanda Flores de Aleman, First Lady of Nicaragua and current member of Congress, drew from her country's hardships to encourage necessary and forward-moving action. In Nicaragua, where officially, official safety measures amidst COVID-19 were brushed aside, families banded together to follow the recommendations of the World Health Organization. She, as activists, she urged us to unite together, reassess our priorities and continue to advocate uh, until they come to fruition. In some countries, there are serious battles to be fought still. The Honorable Madam Emilia Alfaro de Franco, First Lady of Paraguay, conveyed how the pandemic has allowed us to more clearly see the disappropriate, disappropriate challenges women face amidst crisis and provide further visibility for the cause of women. This visibility affords the opportunity to strengthen public policies and to reverse known inequalities and gender-based violence. In her leadership, the leadership of women holds a fundamental role in the rebuilding of the society. And uh, she was mostly inspired also by, by uh, Father and Mother Moon's vision and philosophy of the divine principle and uh, the vision of the Universal Peace Federation of Interdependence, Universally Shared Values and uh, Mutual Prosperity. We also had uh, Honorable Margaret Best, Member of Parliament in Ontario, Canada, exploring the resilient, courageous and compassionate nature of women in terms of distress, in times of distress. She mentioned several of them worldwide and past and present. And uh, navigating through these examples, she drew the lessons and encouraged us to become leaders who step outside of our comfort zone to make a difference in someone else's life. And Dr. Samia Burton, uh, the wife of our Honorable Bur Dr. Burton, former Vice President of Congressional Club in Washington, D.C. and uh, assistant clinical professor of medicine at the George Washington University, acknowledged not only the national and international challenges we are facing, but the pandemic affecting families behind closed doors. Heightened anxiety and restrictions, stay at home orders have led to increase in substance abuse, suicide attempts and domestic violence and so on. But she also highlighted the silver lining, how <clears throat> how it has brought humanity together, how this crisis has brought us together and encouraged us to follow the steps of Dr. Hak Chahan Moon, <coughs> who spreads the message of hope while devoting her energy to creating a better environment for the future. All in all, we felt encouraged. We felt this new alliance of Women's Federation and, Women and UPF International will have a more powerful uh, 
effect on uh, solving our problems together and especially working together with our partners in North, Central and South America, my colleagues, my women leaders, I want to thank them. Also Dr. Jenkins, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Charles uh, uh, Young and uh, Dr. Chin. We all came together in heart, I felt, and therefore we have hope to create a whole new environment for peace and for, for humanity to come out of the crisis stronger than we came in. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Selly. I can see we have a very powerful group of women there ready to work with us. And now I'd like to invite Mrs. Cheryl Wettstein, the coordinator of the Media Association in North America. Please come to the floor, Mrs. Wettstein. Thank you very much. Um, we got a lot of prayer and support for the IMAP panel from Dr. Young, Reverend Shin, Mr. Araya, Mario Salinas helped a lot, Dr. Faraboli, and of course our IMAP chairman, uh, Tom McDivitt, as well as Dr. Jenkins. So we had a very good panel, very diverse. Uh, a lot of concern about the media all over the Western Hemisphere. Uh, Chris Dolan, the president and executive editor of the Washington Times, said the Times is keeping the highest standards of journalism. Uh, they are absolutely un not budging on the traditional values of media. But he said he's finding so many young journalists are actually interested in being hired as reporters so they can advocate for some position. So there's really a lot of uh, reform that needs to be done in terms of what is being taught to young people coming into the industry. Uh, Chris also talked about the industry having um, a problem with, you know, news is expected immediately. It's being done with fewer people. The financial business model is still in flux. Um, so there's a lot of challenges for the media today. Our next speaker was Salvador Nasrallah of Honduras. Uh, he spoke about uh, COVID as being a particularly difficult issue, uh, compromising as all countries. And he said that um, there is professional, moral, and ethical training that needs to be done of young journalists. He said also very a lot about the concern about funding of good journalism that is not beholden to the government or special interests. And he said in especially poor countries like Honduras, uh, how can you have a free press when the people with the money are the ones that you're supposed to be covering? So he talks a lot about how independent journalism is going to be a challenge in a lot of countries. Our next speaker from Brazil was Dr. Sergio de Azevera Redo. Uh, he is president of the Sao Paulo P Press Association. He talked about uh, it, the, the technological advances in journalism and elsewhere. But he said media has fallen down because it is not admitting it, its mistakes, which is part of the loss of credibility. And also it's exacerbating um, ideas of fear and panic and misery. Uh, he talked about the lockdown uh, was just devastating to old people um, and perhaps was an overreaction to COVID. I don't know if he actually thought that, but he was concerned about old people being locked down. Journalists, um, help shape how people think and should care. Uh, Douglas Rame Lanza uh, from Bolivia said that um, he ran a video and he talked about media having power and how uh, it should be used to inform but also build friendships and be transformative for goodness. Our next speaker was David Morgan. He is uh, has vast experience in Washington DC government and he's also president of the Multicultural Media Correspondents Association. So he stressed the need for diversity in media so that people, including people of color, have their, can tell their own story and, and, and talk about their own issues. Uh, he says for social and economic justice to occur, it means collaborating, constructive engagement, and supporting and recognizing diverse media excellence. And then I was the last speaker, and in my remarks, I just went over IMAP's brief history. It was only founded this year. And the fact that events have been held in Europe, in Asia, and in Russia, and that even this weekend, there were IMAP panels happening in Europe and Africa and Asia. 
Uh, going forward, IMAP regions have a lot to do to build up their networks. There's a lot of interest in what IMAP is talking about. And there is much to do to address the challenges and opportunities of what everybody agrees is a vital industry. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Wedstein. I'm sure we all agree that there is a lot to do, but we're happy to see what good people are coming forward to work with, is, with us at this time. And now I'd like to introduce Mr. Robert Duffy, the Secretary General of UPF Canada. Mr. Duffy. Thank you, Dr. Trevor. Uh, our session uh, was the uh, IAAP session. Uh, we had eight speakers of exceptional quality from universities uh, as far away as Lima, Peru to Vancouver, Canada. Uh, our theme was breaking down the walls, pursuing interdependence for a community of peace. And uh, we had uh, Dr. John, uh, Sung Bae Jin open the session with greetings from, uh, as the international coordinator of IAP uh, spoke about the value of interdependence, which is learned first and foremost in the family. Um, and then our, our, our uh, Dr. Evangelista from Peru, uh, a geologist by uh, profession, spoke passionately of the untapped riches of Peru and the entire Pacific Basin, which hold huge potential for natural and tourism resources going forward. Dr. Fabio then uh, from uh, Perrier from Brazil talked about the importance of ethics and morals in the education of youth as the way to transform modern society. Uh, then Dr. Ivania Toruño, rector of the University of Commercial Sciences in Managua, Nicaragua, spoke that, uh, said that higher education in principle should be regarded as a treasure, a heritage, a common good. It's a universal human right for all people. Uh, Dr. Yuri Pankratz from Simon Fraser University, Vancouver, Canada, uh, then gave a passionate plea for support for the people of uh, Belarus who are suffering torture and beatings as they struggle to uh, get fair and free elections in the face of brutal dictatorship. Uh, Dr. Mansurov, Alexander Mansurov, Professor of Security Studies at Georgetown University, Washington, then spoke of the deglobalizing effect of the pandemic and its effect on the business models of universities globally. Uh, Dr. Alves Gonzalez Garita, Professor of Law at Costa Rica, pointed out uh, the unavoidable changes in educational dynamics from the professor as owner of knowledge to that of mediator and support in a student's quest for higher education. He said Techno technology must be made available to everyone. And finally, Dr. Thomas Selliver, international co-coordinator of IAAP, gave uh, and, and president of Sunhack University, Graduate University in Seoul, Korea, gave the call to academicians to contribute to socially constructive interdependence by helping to solve the fragmentation of knowledge and by realizing that interdependence is everywhere and should be acknowledged as an important tool in building a world of peace. Finally, I'd like to say that we had an excellent uh, uh, panel, but we also had excellent uh, UPF volunteers and workers in the background uh, who were in contact with all these speakers and have been in relationship with them for, for years and uh, have um, uh, been the source and foundation for the inspiration as well as their leaders for uh, the development of this new organization under UPF. I believe it's going to be a great, uh, be able to make a great contribution in the future to the development of UPF's overall strategy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Duffy, and thanks uh, to all your panelists. I'm sure we're all beginning to realize more in this time how much we rely on people who have deep knowledge of the problems that we face. And now I'd like to invite to the floor Mr. Alan Jessen, the coordinator for North America of the International Association for Peace and Economic Development. Mr. Jessen. Thank you, Dr. Trevor. Uh, we had a fantastic session today, uh, our first really, uh, with the International Association for Economic Development for Peace. We had five tremendous speakers, uh, three women speakers, 
and I'll just read the names of them. I uh, won't go into specific detail, but John, uh, Honorable John Fonseca was a former Vice Minister of Foreign Trade in Costa Rica. Uh, Mrs. Nicole Verdugo was President of uh, Women's Chamber of Commerce in Chile. Uh, Mr. Aaron Manego, uh, Global Political Solutions uh, here in the USA and works with the administration on opportunity zones. Uh, Mrs. Lillian Schiavo, President of the Brazilian Organization of Women Entrepreneurs in Brazil. And finally, uh, Audra Hodge, uh, CEO of Angel Investors Network. So I think these uh, speakers really showcased really what I AED is uh, is doing. We're bringing together thought leaders uh, with intellectual depth about the economic issues of our time. And then we're uh, also bringing, of course, business leaders who are in, engaged in business, building businesses who have tools to offer, um, mentoring capability, resources to share and, and motivation. So we're attracting people uh, of that quality. And, and then finally, uh, we're seeking to engage business uh, with government people, as Mr. Menegel represented, uh, bringing together the government side. And he spoke uh, about uh, government-private partnerships, where he's working to take sovereign funds and strategic funds and ma marry them with uh, businesses and working in the market areas to solve critical problems, infrastructure problems, and other others, especially in underserved areas. So it's really a, it was a tremendous depth. We could have gone further. Um, I, I want to just quote one thing from Mr. Fonseca, which I think it represents uh, the sentiment of all the speakers, especially in the business people that we're facing a new time. We need new thinking, uh, you know, and address uh, with, with creativity and innovation. But he said, we have to change our business model from one of transaction to relationships, from audience to community, uh, from consumer to co-creator, loyalty to gratitude, and promotion to purpose. So we're, uh, we're seeing that that was echoed a lot that we need to really focus on the human side of uh, business development and uh, less on just money only, but uh, bringing success in strong, strong businesses and helps strong economies. And the COVID situation certainly had uh, interrupted a lot of development of the, in the cultural area. Uh, finally, um, I, our final speaker, and by the way, I want to shout out to our team. We had a great team as well. Uh, Victor Castillo, Central America, and uh, um, Ross Grange down in South America, as well as other, others in the UPF team. So we appreciate all the teamwork to make this possible. But our final speaker, uh, out of her own initiative, she developed a, a landing page for IED, where she invited people to learn more. They can click a link right from the meeting here today and uh, become familiar with IED, read some of the background, and sign up to become dues-paying members of IED in the future as we develop this organization. So that was tremendous. Plus, she's offering a, a valuable resource, uh, thousands of dollars uh, worth of value in coaching. Um, she has a booklet called Accelerating Out of the Pandemic Curve that she was making available free to the IED members. So uh, we have a great foundation to take off here with IED in North America uh, with tremendous people. And, and I was impressed with their, their heart. All of them have a deep connection to our purpose, express a lot of appreciation for uh, a True Mother and uh, the UPF mission. But you can tell that they're really uh, taking ownership of where this uh, potential can lead us. So uh, thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, Mr. Jessen, and thanks to all the moderators for their reports and their reflections today. And just before we move on to the leaders' words, I want to make a special mention of the sterling work of Dr. Ricardo de Sena, President Emeritus of UPF USA, who skillfully moderated the opening session. And also to thanks to Mr. William Selig, UPF Communications Director, for his constant support and management of the hundreds of questions that flowed into our offices during the conference. And now I'd like to invite to the floor Mr. Tom McDevitt, the Chairman of the Washington Times and the H.J. Magnolia Global Foundation. Mr. Dent McDevitt. Thank you very much, Dr. Jones, and thank you for your leadership and 
Uh, greetings to all of my colleagues, my friends, and family. I think we've gone through an amazing turning point these last three days, celebrating the 15th anniversary of UPF, founded 2005. Seven years later, True Father ascended, and, tr and True Mother led us forward in another seven-year course. And I think what's happened this weekend is a critical turning point connected to the World Summit in which UPF is emerging on a global stage. And I saw five different things happen when I spoke in Asia, three o'clock in the morning on the media panel, and then over to Africa in the, in the, uh, later in the day, then in America, then back to Asia, three o'clock in the morning for the business effort with IED, back to Africa, I sent a video, and then this afternoon with, or this morning with uh, IMAP. Uh, I had a chance to glimpse everything around the world. And uh, it's stunning to see the growth of what we are actually doing centered upon True Mother's leadership and her vision. I think it's very fitting at the 100 year anniversary of True Father's birth, at the eighth anniversary of the Sungwa, and we keep that at the heart and soul of what we're doing. There's five things I saw that happened. Number one, our movement is growing in mastery of new technology that's vital during this COVID pandemic era. We're learning how to use these tools, not just to use them, but to attract people. Second, what kind of people are we attracting? Top leaders who deliver substance because of their experience and their alignment with us. Incredible people. We don't have time to go through the names and I'm sure there'll be great records of this conference, but every panel everywhere had top people that have been working together and delivered great leadership. Third, we developed the ability to grow audiences. In a couple of the programs in Asia, there were over 6,000 people uh, that, I, that uh, were part of the media and the business. Here, even on this, this panel right now, there's over several thousand people watching. And for you that are watching, thank you for tuning in, because if you weren't here, it would be like a tree falling in the forest and no one would hear. And fourth, and most essentially, is the quality of content I think we've got to put together a special section or two or three to capture the wisdom and, and valuable insights and leverage that content, repurpose it, get it out to the world and use this weekend as a great time of discovery. And finally, I am seeing uh, an awakening in the people that work with us, a greater deal of confidence that UPF, True Mother, our movement as a whole, what we stand for, is exactly what the world needs now. And we are the people to move it forward. So I think number five, we are moving into the realm of substantial kingdom building impact to solve the critical challenges in the world like we've never seen it happen before. And the reason that's true is because people that connect with all of you and all of our movement get transformed because God is working at the center. Thank you. And it was just an honor to work these three days. It reminded me of what must be like for a true mother when she pushed so hard the last 40 days of last year and over the last seven years. And let's continue to move forward because as we do that, we're going to get great new energy, many more people, and uh, the world will begin to shift its attention, as true mother is saying, to align with our creator. Thank you very much and God bless. Thank you too, Mr. McDevitt, for your tremendous work in this program. And now the, the key to the UPF Foundation. I'd like to invite Dr. Thomas Walsh, our chairman of UPF International, to share some words with us. Dr. Walsh. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jones. And uh, what, uh, what an inspiration to hear these uh, reports of the incredible achievement over the past uh, three days. Uh, I feel so proud of all of you, those who've reported, many of you, all of you are my friends and buddies and colleagues, but when I see you and listen to you speak, uh, you truly look like world leaders that I look up to and am, am proud of. I think, wow, uh, maybe I underestimated that person. They are, they are giants uh, who can give so much to this world. So thank 
all of you who've been involved in this uh, masterful and uh, profoundly impactful ILC 2020. I think we all agree it exceeded our expectations. Uh, it had uh, some blessing of heaven, uh, the wind at our back with a heavenly wind, the Holy Spirit. I said it's a, it's a zeitgeist and a, uh, a holy geist or a ho holy spirit uh, that is uh, with us, I, f I feel, because it is more than our intellect, more than our hard work. Uh, it's, it's also deeply smart work, and it's smart also because it's grounded in spiritual moral values that is anchored in the vision that we all benefited from, certainly from all of our religious traditions. We love the great world religions and we've all been raised up in those traditions and they've made us in many ways who we are, but also deeply uh, grateful to the uh, way in which Father and Mother Moon have uh, brought such uh, profound innovation and insight and irrepressible drive and passion and commitment that has, I believe, stirred us all to levels of accomplishment that uh, are so far beyond what, at least in my case, I ever could have imagined. Uh, the UPF in particular has been uh, just uh, a grand and amazing, overwhelmingly impressive journey to uh, behold and observe. I'm so happy to hear Dr. Uh, Trevor Jones and Dr. Simao Faraboli talk about the tour back in 2005 and the impact that that tour that went to uh, hun you know 150 or more nations over about a six month period. In, in uh, the spring of 2006, it went to every state in uh, the United States. And uh, this was truly an investment of Father Mother Moon that was uh, unprecedented. And uh, to see how things have developed and grown, I can think of no better way to celebrate UPF's 15th anniversary than to be at work, not to just go to some hotel and cut a big cake and uh, pat each other on the back. But we spent these three days rolling up our sleeves and we've spent the last five weeks or so uh, doing nothing else but preparing for this ILC together. The collaboration has been outstanding and remarkable. Uh, the, the what we call the principle of unity, or let's call it the principle of interdependence and mutual prosperity uh, centered on universal values. I think as we apply those principles in our working, we become a model. And to use our uh, current crisis of COVID, uh, the world certainly has a, a virus that is a great threat but we also see other uh, kind of uh, moral and spiritual viruses that are affecting the world very, very negatively that uh, promotes division and conflict and extreme inequality and uh, a failure to deeply love and respect one another and a failure to love and respect the environment. So. I believe UPF is, uh, some of you with medical background could articulate it better, but a kind of a, a vaccine or a homeopathic remedy or certain uh, <coughs> items of our health, spiritually, morally, that are needed at this time. So please understand how significant the work uh, that you're doing uh, is I think we are emerging as a game changer in this world, just as we heard from former Secretary General Ban Ki-moon when he spoke at the Rally of Hope. And behind it really is the, the deep innovation and the meaning of the life and work 
of Father Moon, who we celebrate his centenary this year, and the ongoing, uh, remarkable, brilliant, dedicated, quietly powerful leadership of Dr. Hak Jahan Moon, who uh, truly we express our gratitude and appreciation. I'm going to stop there, uh, very inspired, very encouraged by you and by what has been accomplished here. And we are not stopping here. We are uh, immediately, as soon as this closing uh, session is over, we are going to be convening to move forward. And I look forward to uh, hearing about the resolution uh, that will be presented shortly. Thank you all. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Walsh. And uh, may I just say that uh, your constant leadership over many years and through many storms is an inspiration for me and I'm sure for everyone else. Thanks again for your words this afternoon. And now, Dr. Changshik Yang, UPF Regional Chair of Central America and Caribbean, a man who has a long history, not only with UPF, but with the movement as a whole. I would be happy to hear from you now, Dr. Yang. Thank you. Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear sisters and brothers, good afternoon, buenos dias, boa tarde. Thank you for joining uh, this closing session. Uh, first and foremost, Thank you very much for your attendance over the last three days. Above all, I would like to sincerely thank to all the panelists for their great presentations. I believe their, cre their creative ideas and constructive suggestions have given hope to those living in despair through the COVID-19 pandemic. This was our first time to experience a three-day seminar program conducted entirely online. For each of the sessions, uh, the invited panelists were uh, reading, uh, leading experts in their fields, which drew a lot of uh, people's attention. Our 55 speakers made our program a richer and a higher standard than any other usual ILC in the past. I hope this um, One America's Conference will serve as a leading role in ushering in a post-coronavirus era of goodness and bring about a future realizing a much better Americas. When father started the radar project, uh, radar project in Paraguay, he announced about launching North and South America Welfare Foundation. If Latin America's resources and the labor, the manpower, uh, and North America's capital and the technology cooperate each other, it will be double and triple stronger for the greater Americans. On behalf of conference organizer, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to great contributors for this conference success. We had each session's moderators, Dr. Ricardo Dosena, Dr. Franco Pamelaro, Archbishop Starlings, Dr. Susan Tarper, Mr. Reddy Marpet, Mr. Thomas McDavid, Mr. Robert Duffy, and Dr. Trevor Jones all did an outstanding job to, to uh, manage the programs smoothly and professionally. We also have three heroes, the Secretary General of Americas, UPF, Mr. Reddy Marpet from USA, Dr. Smao Peraboli, South America, and Mr. Eliza Raya from Central America and Caribbean, who were totally united and became a fantastic team. With them, there was no day or night in order to make this conference success. We have been communicating with each other 24 hours a day with our cell phones never turned off. I would particularly like to recognize our technical team, centering on Sonia Patterson from our UPF International Office, Sister Kayla, Joshua, and EJ Lapada from USA headquarters, and Emmanuel, Erika, Juan, Allen, David, and uh, Chungnam, from Argentina and Brazil, and the head of tech, Mr. Elijah Raya from Costa Rica. They were green room from 30 minutes, even one hour before. Each session begin and stayed until the end of sessions. Although they worked from different nations, they were totally united team and did not allow for even one single mistake. 
thank you so much for your amazing work of professionalism and for each one of your beautiful heart for the realization of goals of this conference. We cannot thank enough our UPF international office, officers, Dr. Walsh, Dr. Hamad, and Mrs. Galawa, and the women generals, Angelica, Domiko Sang, and uh, Gail, and Cheryl Westin from, you know, Gail from Barbados, did great mission. Without your mentoring and the support, this would not have been such a successful conference. We had professional translators, all came from in-house. We not hired even one single from outside. Dr. Tosena, Remy Tapia, uh, Mario Salinas, and Balsia, and Young Sun, and Gabriela, they worked hard from several different countries. Thank you. Last and not least, I would like to thank America's regional chairs, Dr. Ki Hoon Kim of USA, Dr. Moon Si Kim in Canada, and Reverend Sang Seok Kim from Latin America. We thank you to five sub-regional directors of North America, as well as Latin America sub-regional directors, who worked so hard to mobilize audience to make this conference such a great success. On behalf of the organizing committee, Dr. Jenkins, Reverend Shin, and I are so proud and appreciative to all of you. Through this occasion, we have truly become one Americas under our true parent umbrella, starting from the internal leaders first. We feel so proud of each other, ladies and gentlemen, dear brothers and sisters, although this is a difficult time in human history, even our church history, but this too shall pass. Let us go through this dark tunnel with hope and vision, aiming to create a bright new community, nation, and one Americas. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Obrigado. Thank you very much, Dr. Yang. Inspiring words, as always. Thank you. And now, Reverend Dong Moon Shin, UBF Regional Chair for South America, a man who I have worked with for a number of years now and who has spent a long time in the South. Please, Reverend Shin, you have the floor. Distinguidos embedros para la paz, señoras y señores. Hoy concluimos el último día de la conferencia de tres días. Como habrán dotado nuestro mundo de hoy en tantas muchas dificultades en este estado de caos. Sin embargo, a pesar de estas dificultades, nos hemos reunido aquí para deliberar junto a líderes de diversos campos en busca de esperanza. En particular, descubrí que muchas de los participantes en esta conferencia han enfatizado y han practicado la voluntad de los fundadores de la UPF sobre la interdependencia, la prosperidad mutua y los valores universales. Quiero aprovechar este momento para agradecer a todos los asistentes. También quiero agradecer a la madre verdadera, la cofundadora de la UPF. Los fundadores de la UPF dicen que Dios es la clave para resolver todos los conflictos. También nos dicen que la esencia de Dios es el amor. Nos enseñaron que el amor de Dios es el amor verdadero y que el principio y el fin del amor verdadero es dar y dar y luego olvidar. Eso significa dar incondicionalmente y vivir por el bien de los demás sin esperar nada cambio. Deben darse cuenta del gran valor que tiene vivir por el bien de los demás que les trae alegría y por consiguiente ponerlo en práctica. Estas ideas fundamentalmente conocen fronteras, razas, religiones y son el comienzo de la solución de todos los problemas, incluido el COVID-19 a través de la UPF. Espero que hoy salgan determinados a tener una fuerte comienzo como 
enviadores para la paz, que viven para hacer realidad la visión de paz con la que los fundadores han soñado durante todas sus vidas. Espero que se conviertan en protagonistas que logren el sueño de que América del Sur y del Norte se conviertan en una y realicen una América. Dios bendiga a todos. Muchísimas gracias. Gracias. Thank you, Reverend Shin. Good to hear you speaking Spanish. There's not enough of us. <laughs> and now, please to come to the floor, Dr. Michael Jenkins, President of UPF International, Regional Chair of UPF North America. Dr. Jenkins. Thank you, Dr. Jones. I really am grateful to be here. This ILC 2020 for the Americas was a, a giant step forward for UPF International. We celebrate the 15th anniversary. I want to congratulate Dr. Walsh, who's our chairman, and Dr. Changshik Young, the regional chair of Central American Caribbean, and also Reverend Dong Mu Shin, uh, regional chair of South America. We work together night and day. And we did this in a little over a week. We were able to pull this whole conference together because of the foundation that True Mother has created through uh, the sacrifices of true parents starting in 2005 when they founded the Universal Peace Federation at the Lincoln Center and then went to every corner of the world. We had no idea that one day we would have this enormous foundation for peace with congressmen, senators, heads of state, religious leaders, and leaders from every area. We're very grateful for this time that we could learn so much. And during the COVID crisis, uh, we're also working online day and night. And so we have never challenged this kind of conference where we had 10 sessions with technical uh, needs for every single session. So I too wanna thank our tech team, Sonny Patterson, EJ Rapata, and Eliezer Araya, an incredible team. And I'm proud to say that our almost 60 speakers, not one person missed their part of the program, not one. We had some amazing breakdowns along the way, uh, but we were always able to solve them just before the program started. And that's not a, a simple matter either, but we have a global communication system now. I really wanna thank Mr. Larry Moffat who really put in a tremendous amount of time for all of the Americas and Dr. Bill Selig and Dr. Ricardo DeSena, they were just outstanding and all of our moderators and especially the moderators generally were the chairpersons of the coordinators. We have coordinators now for every association for every se sector of the world. So the Americas was a cluster of nations. I was able to attend the cluster of nations in Asia Pacific with Korea and Japan and be part of the IAPP there. But I do wanna mention the associations have really taken on a very substantial influence in the world. Dr. Walsh is the chairman of the International Summit Council for Peace Association from the international headquarters. Dr. Michael Jenkins, myself is IAPP. Dr. Taj Ahmad is IAPD. Ms. Blessie DeCall, IAFLP for First Ladies, Mr. McDivitt for IMAP Media and also IAED for Business, and Dr. Sunjay, Sungbae Kim, or Dr. Sungbae Jin, and Dr. Thomas Celeber for the Scholars, uh, International Association of Academians for Peace. Uh, amazing foundation that I have seen grow now. Uh, that's become very substantial. We've had conferences for many years, since 2005 and even before. And those conferences were the foundation for all this work. But right now, what's happening through the ILC 2020 and this section for Americas, we bonded together in heart. We're working together. I know Congressman Dan Burton, our international co-chairman of IAPP, is very excited because We've now had Zoom conferences with every sector of the world and all the parliamentarians of the world who believe that mother is leading the way to peace, the mother of peace. But also it was even more engaging when we could have this depth of discussion in the IAPP session with Congressman Burton there 
and very significant members of parliament from South Central America and the Caribbean. It was very moving. Also the ISCP, can you imagine heads of state from all over the world, especially in the Americas, so developed that they now believe and work with Mother Moon as really the hope for peace, not just our special leader that's bringing peace, but they really believe in, in Mother Moon as the leader towards peace more effectively than, than any other individual in the world. It's, that's even the testimony of Secretary General Ban Ki-moon coming forward and sharing that UPF is going to be a cornerstone for peace. It's playing that kind of central role. With that, we're just uh, very, very much seeing the bonding of relationships like I've never seen before in this conference. The first ladies from different nations, Guatemala, Paraguay, and also from Nicaragua, and Dr. Samia Burton as a, as a vice president of the Congressional Club and also a, a professional medical doctor. Uh, the engagement was so deep and they're getting to know each other because they were together at the World Summit and then we went to the Rally of Peace online, and then we went together for this ILC. So now our working relationships are really getting very, very strong, very strong. So three things I can see that we learned from the Americas Conference. Number one, we understand our founders so much better. The video Dr. Walsh, you put together on the history of UPF and our sharing for the celebration really give people a real feeling of the lifelong efforts to bring all the world together. And we learned about Father and Mother Moon's time in the Pantanal and the jungles for years, and for years combing every city of America and every part of the world, pouring out their hearts and their love with everybody. All people are one family from their point of view. And it helped us understand interdependence, mutual prosperity, and universal values. That came through in this conference like never before. The unity and cooperation of all professionals in each sector is the, something that's affecting the direction of the world. The IMAP conference and also the IAED conference today with Tom McDivitt and the business leaders was so factual, so strong. And I can see that every sector of humanity is now being affected by leaders who are respected in the world, but those leaders are coming together as one family. They start to feel that we are truly on the path to really give hope to the world, but substantially solve the problems in the world. One of the things we learned also from North and South America together with Central America was that Father Mother Moon always emphasized family and marriage as the key to peace. Mm -hmm and also the blessing of marriage. And what's really beautiful is all these panelists have come through the blessing in their own traditions and they're blessed couples. So we stand, we stand together as people who have that covenant with God that we're going to have our family stay strong. We're gonna be faithful to our families and lift up marriage everywhere. Another key item that really came through was that America is basically Protestant and South America, Central America is basically coming on the Roman Catholic foundation. Now we embrace each other and all religions are being embraced, Islam and Judaism. But the backbone of North and South America is that Christian foundation. Father Moon always said, if we could really come together and bring Protestant and Catholic together, it will make a spiritual condition to melt the barriers in every part of the world, not only the Middle East, but it'll also melt down the barrier between North and South Korea. We always need a prayer and a spiritual condition. And I could see that condition, Dr. Walsh, was made in this conference like I've never seen before. The IAPD was the most significant panel I've ever seen of the religious leaders with Dr. Noel Jones, Bishop Stallings, Reverend Chelly. These people are really educated in True Mother's Principles of Peace. They're not just coming and giving a little bit of their own view of how to make, build a better world. They're doing that, but it's on the foundation of knowing and understanding Mother Moon's teaching and that we must honor God. If we honor God, if we attend God, we will bring peace in the world. And then finally, we learned that this battle, the bringing all the world together, is not a simple thing. The Americas are the battleground of the God-affirming world with uh, free democracies based on God-affirming democracies and the battle of God-denying 
uh, forms of government that are also trying to say that socialism and materialism will be the way for the future. And those two battles are going on. I feel like we broke down that that barrier tremendously by bringing people from every country. And I know our audience here, over 900 are on with us now and thousands on, on YouTube. It's an amazing accomplishment. So I'm very proud of our association heads and everybody, especially Congressman Burton, we thank you. Also, Honorable Alfaro and Ms. Maribel uh, Baretas and all of our Secretary Generals. We're so grateful for this time. Dr. Faraboli, Dr. Moffitt, and also our Secretary General Eliasar. We're thankful to true parents. We're basically believe mother is now in a position where the world is now coming in the door with joy. They wanna be with us. They want to join our conferences and they are. And because of that, I can see the momentum is growing like never before. I'm very grateful, Dr. Walsh, for the ILC 2020. And I see a new future for us ahead that will rapidly bring this world out of the darkness into the light. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Jenkins, for those stirring words. I'm sure indeed we'll be marching forward with more determination than ever. And now I'd like to invite to speak the Honorable Jose Alberto Alfaro, the President of the IAPP for Central America and the Caribbean. Honorable Alfaro. Good afternoon, uh, dear, dear friends. Quiero uh, en esta tarde eh, agradecer en nombre de la Asociación Internacional de Parlamentarios por la Paz de Centroamérica y el Caribe a todos los grandiosos panelistas de cada una de las sesiones que tuvimos eh, de forma eh, programada y que fueron personas que aportaron eh, hacia los conceptos de paz y armonía en el mundo. Sin excepción, estuvieron magníficos y le dieron un gran valor a este eh, gran foro eh, mundial de las Américas Cumbre de Paz. Felicidades a, eh, a la UPF por su 15 aniversario, a nuestra cofundadora, nuestra madre Moon, y en especial al doctor Wolf al doctor Jenkins, eh, al doctor Jan, my friends, eh, doctor Chin, por su grandioso liderazgo. Y a todos y a cada uno de los coordinadores y colaboradores que hicieron posible el gran éxito de este magnífico evento que ayudará y estoy seguro al mundo a encaminarse hacia una sagrada comunidad global. Muchas gracias a todos. Que Dios los bendiga. Gracias, honorable, honorable José Alberto Alfaro. Gracias. And now, we'd like to introduce Senora Mirabel Barretos, Ambassador for Peace, expert and lecturer on conscience, who is joining us from Brazil. Senora Barretos, por favor. Thank you, Dr. John. Fraternal greetings to all. As an ambassador of peace in Bahia, Brazil, I am honored to be part of this great planetary family, the Universal Peace Federation. Congratulations to all of us who have taken on this mission of building a world of peace, seeking day by day to live in freedom, harmony, cooperation, and prosperity. We are so but with the certainty that the fruits are already being harvested. This event, which celebrates 15 years of UPF's existence, is a clear proof that we are fulfilling our mission and we can do even more. We understand that peace is an essential quality that must characterize all relationships. I hope that we can build in us the peace that we long for humanity and that future generations can benefit 
or, uh, from all the achievements of the UPF. We recognize our universal divine source as the basis of harmony and unification, and we will continue to work hard for this. So I conclude my speech wishing peace for the entire universe, peace over all borders, peace for all earthly humanity, much peace for the whole orb earth. Thank you so much for celebrating this day with all of you. Thank you very much. Gracias, Sr. Reverences. Bendiciones. And now, a special speaker, a man who has walked with us for a few years and is now leading in many areas, as others have already expressed. I'd now like to invite to the stage the Honourable Van Burton, International Co-Chairman of the International Association of Parliamentarians for Peace, a member of the US Congress from 1983 to 2013. Dr. Burton and his wife, Samia, will now share some words with us. You have the floor, Dr. Burton. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And uh, I think before I say anything, I'd like to ask my wife just to say a few words and then uh, I'll summarize. Thank you very much. Here's my wife, Dr. Samia Burton, a beautiful young lady. <laughs> thank you. Hi, how are you doing? It's so nice to be with you. First of all, congratulations to Dr. Walsh and his amazing team on the, the, 50, the, 50, the 50th anniversary of the establishment of UPF. It's amazing job. It's really so impressive. I really enjoyed the conference and I joined mostly being with the first ladies and uh, Dr. Sanjay Moon. It was a very uplifting, conference and very uplifting talks uh, for peace and thank you very much nice to be with you all now everybody in the world that's watching this can see why i married this lady uh, let me just start off by saying there's a few people i'd like to thank not just for this conference uh, but also people who are working day in and day out to, to, to solve the problems of the world and to carry on the message that mother moon has been working so hard for for many, many years. Uh, of course, Dr. Walsh, uh, and uh, you know, after 15 years uh, with UPF, he's done an outstanding job and he still looks young and he's got a lovely wife. Uh, Dr. Jenkins, uh, I saw there beside you, Dr. Jenkins, you had that beautiful young lady, Rico. Uh, we've got to recognize her because she works so hard in front of the scenes and behind the scenes. So Rico, thank you for all your hard work. Dr. Young, thank you for what you're doing. Uh, you've done a great job in the past and we appreciate you today. Uh, Tom McDivitt, my good buddy, golfing buddy uh, and friend, uh, he's always there and always does an outstanding job. And behind the scenes so many times is, is Larry Moffitt. Larry, thank you for what you do, for what you put up with, especially from me. And uh, we really appreciate you. And finally, I wanna thank Ricardo, my buddy, uh, for all the things he does and for the moderations, moderating that he's done in the past. Let me just summarize what I'd like to say, and that is that I have worked with leaders all around the world in conferences like this and uh, meetings uh, in, in various parts of the world. I have never in my life met anyone who works as hard as Mother Moon, Dr. Hakshahan Moon, has in the cause of peace. I've said this many times before, but I really mean it from my heart. She has gone all over the world, uh, day and night, conferences and, and, and meetings everywhere in the cause of peace. And at a time like this in history, if we ever needed leadership like that, we need it now. Not just because of the pandemic, but because of uh, the potential for terrorist activities and, and wars and everything else that's going on. So I'd like to say before we get into the resolution that I'm gonna be talking about in a few minutes, Mother Moon, thank you for all you do. Thank your daughters and sons and everybody who's worked with you in the cause of peace. And um, we all love you and we appreciate you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Burton and Dr. Samia Burton for your contributions today. And now indeed, we'd like to call on everyone to affirm our resolution 
or the ILC 2020. And we are showing you now that very resolution with the signatures of many of you. Uh, Congressman Burton, if you'd like to say some words about this. Yes, what I'd like to do is uh, make some comments about the resolution and what it contains. And I hope everybody who's watching right now and has the resolution in front of them will uh, uh, join with me at the conclusion in, in, in supporting it. The resolution main points are at a time of serious global challenges and on the occasion of the 15th anniversary of the founding of the Universal Peace Federation, the UPF convened its first virtual international leadership conference on September 11th to the 13th on 2020 dedicated to the theme of opportunity and hope at a time of global crisis, interdependence, mutual prosperity, and universal values. Our purpose was to seek solutions to current problems while also exploring new ways of envisioning our common life together as one global family. Tens of thousands of participants attended ILC 2020. The program themes were built around the core associations of the Universal Peace Federation. Here in this resolution, we hereby summarize the core recommendations for consideration by our global UPF network, as well as by governments, NGOs, faith-based organizations, and the people of the world. We conclude with words of gratitude to Dr. Haq Jahan Moon, co-founder of the Universal Peace Federation, and congratulations to the Universal Peace Federation on the occasion of the 15th anniversary. Thank you, Dr. Burton, Congressman Burton. And now we'd like to get everyone to, together in gallery mode so that we can confirm and affirm the resolution. Would you all raise your right hand, please, around the world? Be it affirmed and accepted on this Sunday, September the 13th, 2020, that this International Leadership Conference is a major step forward in firmly establishing a unified world of peace. And if you agree, say, I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. Thank you all very much. We really appreciate it. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Congressman. And now I'd like to say a few closing words. Indeed, with, the final, with this final act, the signing of the resolution, we have come to the end of the first virtual International Leadership Conference here in the year 2020. It has been a pleasure to have your company for these three days and I am sure that we will meet again soon. In fact, I know we will meet again soon because in two short weeks' time, we will be joining together with the Family Federation for World Peace and with our founder and leader, Mother Hakja Han Moon, to hold the second Rally of Peace 2020, which will take place on the 27th of this month, or if you're in this time zone, probably on the 26th. I want to especially thank once again Dr. Thomas Walsh, International Chairman, Dr. Michael Jenkins, International President, and of course our Regional Directors, Dr. Chang Shik Yang and Reverend Dong Wu Shin, for their perseverance, their guidance, and inspiration that has been amply demonstrated in the preparing and fulfilling of this event. But of course, as you know, there is one thing that binds us all together in this work. And this is the example and inspiration of Reverend and Mrs. Moon. As you know, throughout their lives, they have always felt the desire of our Creator to establish a world of peace, the ideal that has been there since the beginning of time. And even though Reverend Moon is no longer with us physically, we often feel his presence, especially on occasions like the 15th anniversary of the founding of UPF, which we celebrated yesterday. And Dr. Mrs. Hakchahan Moon has shown her determination to continue that work, the work that they started together in 1960. And in these past eight years since Reverend Moon's ascension, she has indeed worked tirelessly, as many of you have said, 
traveling the world, sharing the vision of hope, especially under the themes of Peace Begins With Me and One World Under God. So please join us again soon so that we can continue this journey together. Good afternoon and goodbye. Hasta luego.